Let's talk about it, Hunter Biden. Let's talk about you, sir. Well, Hunter Biden jeopardized his father's campaign. Oh, woe is me. Hunter, who spoke frankly, this is from the New Yorker, to me about his struggles with addiction, started drinking socially as a teenager. Oh, you, you're a great parent, old, old Joe. Um, when he was a student at Georgetown in the early 90s, he took up smoking Marlboro Red cigarettes and occasionally used cocaine. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Occasionally used cocaine. How come he wasn't mass incarcerated? How come he ain't in the, in the jail right now with all the black men who were in jail for, for crack? You want to talk disparities and stuff now? How come he ain't in jail? You know what you could do to me to prove to me that you on the right path? Lock your son up. I didn't have, uh, um, he says, he says once hoping to buy cocaine, he was sold a piece of crack. But he wasn't sure how to take the drug. I didn't have a stem, Hunter said. I didn't have a pipe. He eventually used a cigarette to try to smoke crack. He ain't in jail. And you know what else? Not only is he not in jail, the last I heard, last I heard he was doing big deals, big money deals with Heinz's and stuff. See, listen, people have cars to play in this life. All that stuff Hunter Biden did, none of his cards got taken away. He had all the cards of, of being white, having the daddy who was a, 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 a who senator in politics, granddaddy did X, Y. He had all these cards. And no matter what he did, none of his cards got taken away. We get born with no cards and then get like fingers chopped off. How? I don't forgive you or your son. He should be in jail. The man's been an addict for a long time, admittedly. He's been in rehab and all kind of stuff. But somehow, somehow, he got kicked out of, 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 of military. He did a, a random cocaine test. Didn't, didn't Biden graduate in the bottom of his class? Y'all don't deserve to be where you are. No. And let me say something else. Biden, you've had enough terms. This is the, you've had enough terms. This is your third time running for president. You're a failure. Let it go. Just let it go. Give your plan to somebody else. They're lie. We got like 20 candidates or whatever it is. On the, give that plan to somebody else as a framework and walk away. And please don't feel sorry for these people. They had all the opportunity in the world and they're just mediocre. These are mediocre people. You in the military and you just snorting away. And this man, bottom of his class, what are y'all doing? How do you get to be my nominee? No, you are rejected. I don't want you. I don't trust you. The first question. And no, it's not forgivable. You and your son running around. This is my uh, Then the son started. I ain't even going to. Oh, child, you can look that up. Read the New York article. It got a, a lot of stuff about the, 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 all the stuff that goes on with that family. But anyway, um, when you talk about having cars, this was another part of the article. Hunter was concerned about his future as a lobbyist because, of course, you get to be a lobbyist when your daddy is a, is a senator. That's what you get to do. You don't have to have any kind of skills. You got the cards. And his financial worries increased in 2006 when he bought a $1.6 million house in an affluent neighborhood without... without Read this with me, fam. Without the savings for a down payment, he took out a mortgage for 110% of the purchase price. Oh, my God. What is it like when people work, work with your mediocre self? Joe Biden, the daddy, was at the bottom of his class. And his son, he couldn't, couldn't even with all the privilege and all the daddy and all the stuff in the world, you couldn't come up with the with the down payment. And they gave you 110% and you get a million dollar house and you are, you are nothing. You are a mediocre person. You are a mediocre man. And everybody wants to talk about this like it don't matter. All of this too is because your father... Is Joe Biden, United States Senator. That's what it is. And he's been running for, he's going to run again. All of this is an exchange because they know if they do stuff for you, they're going to get stuff from your father. It's all an exchange. Politics, life is an exchange. And we're sitting here with nothing to exchange with this man. 
who handicapped us and tripped us and destroyed our lives in the terms of you talking about talk, people want to talk about the black nuclear family is gone. Joe Biden. You don't get to say anything to me ever. You get to take your plan and walk off. Give it to somebody else. I think you should give it to somebody who's good with plans. Give it to another candidate. You should have been walked off. When you when you when when you got in trouble for plagiarizing way back when, you should have walked off. But see, these people don't know how to walk off when they're obvious failures. They just know how to eat all the food in the room. So we don't have nothing. This is a problem. Biden is a problem. Biden's son is a problem. Uh, uh, Biden's daughter is a problem. She, whatever she did, somebody said they had a video of her, whatever, the New York Post. You know, the New York Post is a rag and it's right wing, but they, but that's what they do. They saw the video and said, well, we don't go, we're not going to buy the video for two million. We're just going to report about it. So both your kids are alleged. Well, one of them admitted to having addiction problems. The other one is alleged to have a problem and you want to come, but you locked us up. You locked us up, but you got a girl and a boy. Who got so many problems? The girl allegedly, the 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 but but Hunter, we know he struggles. But they ain't in jail. They're not behind bars. They're not drinking dirty water. The rules are just for us. So for us, it's lock the SOBs up. But for your kids, it's like give them a second chance. But you want me to trust you with my future? You want you want you want ADOS parents to trust you with the futures of their kids and their nieces and their nephews and their cousins? No, you disqualified still. There's nothing. Let me just let me just let me just let me just put it out there. There's nothing you can do, Joe Biden. Nothing at this point to make me vote for you. Not ever. Not in this life. Not in this life and the next one. I am not voting for you. Because what you did, see, because it's not just, let me show you something. It's not just about, it's not just about the incarceration. It's what the incarceration leads to, too. This was Antonio's chart, and nobody was really doing these charts before him. So it's not just about that. It's not just about the chart. This chart leads to this. It leads to this chart. This one chart, the chart about incarceration is bad enough, but you got to talk about what it leads to. Racial impact. Of a criminal record on interview callbacks. This was in 2003. A phenomenal. Um, it's worse now, I'm sure. But a phenomenal um, uh, his, uh, researcher did this. Um, but we'll talk about that another day. Anyway, um, uh, uh, when you look at when you look at black, that's blue. I wish they had made black brown. It was amazing. But criminal record, 5% callback. But look at the blue in both charts right now. That's black. No criminal record, 14%. Now look at the white. See, we can't even really get callbacks when we don't have a criminal record. And you put us in a situation where we do have a criminal record, that's a 5% callback. We can't get a job, can't live, can't eat, and that's because you called us, lock them up, lock the so SOBs up. They're thugs. That's you, Joe Biden. You don't get a second chance. You get to retire in peace. And that's, let me tell you something. You get to retire in peace, and I'm going to tell you the truth, that's more than you deserve. That's more than you deserve. You have a pension coming from, from, your, from the senator. That's more than you deserve. You have gotten in this life more than you deserve. Anyway, do you not ask me again to be president? You have ran too many times. Three times? Your life has been too good. And our lives have been too bad. You have eaten all the cake. You and your little failure children. The other one, the one that you had to have promised died. The other ones are just little little failure children. That's what you've done. You don't get to come here. Like, how does somebody who has kids who are ads come here and get to tell us something? You don't get to tell me anything. You don't get to police my people and say, lock the SOBs up when your kids are struggling out here. Ain't, ain't it something? Ain't it something? Ain't it something out of the universe teach you sometimes? But you don't get to tell me nothing. Mr. Biden, I'm so sorry. I hate it for you. But this is what you created. You created this. It's, it's good to, one of the things it's good to remember is that re regardless of what, your, what you or I, anybody else, feels about Reverend Jesse Jackson, it's good to remember that he was one of the people who opposed it. The crime bill of 1994 is what I'm talking about. So it wasn't as if Biden just didn't know or all the CBC were in favor or he was just clueless. There were people who were opposed to it at the time 
who were telling you this is not going to end well for my people. It's a problem for my people. But you didn't care. You had cozied up to racists. Strom Thurmond was your, was your, was your boy and, and East, all, these, all these segregationists. Because you weren't concerned about us. We were a tool that you could kick around and get votes. And now you want to try to be nice to us to get votes. And we're finished. We don't play that game of that we just forgive you for destroying us anymore. You, the cost of destroying us, we can't do anymore, but the cost of destroying ADOS life is that you will never be president. You will never sit at that desk. That should be the cost. We will never vote for you. You will never be in the Oval Office. You will never walk into that White House and hear somebody say, Mr. President, no, you are, no, not you, not you. Not you. You will never get it. That's the price you pay. And I hope you cry yourself to sleep every night because that was your dream, wasn't it, to one day be president. I hope you never see the inside of the, of, of the White House as president. You would as VP, but I hope as the, as, the, as, the, as, the H, as, the, as the head person in charge, as president of these United States, you never see that. That's, that's my prayer because you do not deserve it. Everything that you've done to us. You shouldn't even want to be present. You should be prayerful in your life right now about what you have caused and what you have wrought. And you should hope that it that that you should hope right now that God has mercy on you for what you have done instead of trying to lead. You are not fit for leadership. You are not fit. This man has done awful things. The most awful thing. The architect of the most awful thing for us in terms of being a community how much wealth how much earning power not wealth but income how much cohesion in terms of families and stuff how do you think that was lost when biden did what he did blocking the thugs of the sobs he made it bipartisan democrats were talking about law and order and justice he said Psh, what's justice hey <laughs> justice is the fact that hunter need to be in jail that's what it is if rakeem is in jail and 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 Tommy and Leroy and and Mike, then Hunter need to be right there beside them, getting his hair braided. How about that? It's ridiculous. It's finished. Like I'm finished. I don't even. I don't even. I don't even. And it leads. I I talked about how it leads to this, but understand that it also leads to this. When you talk about when you talk about this was 2016. When you talk about poverty. <sighs> When you lock up all those men, how you gonna even have income? Forget wealth, we don't have that at all. But how are you even gonna have any kind of income? You lock, you locked all the men up. This is where we are. This is where we are. Now Hunter got approved for a million dollar loan with no down payment to justify after he done did all that cocaine, but we can't get nothing. You can't even get a call back for a job. Hunter got a million dollar deal. We can't even get a call back for a job. Well, he got a million dollar deal and you do an interview with the New Yorker where you expect me to feel sorry for you. You know, I've had my struggles. I don't care. I don't care about your struggles. I don't care about what you went through. You didn't go with a little privileged household. You just wanted to smoke. You want to do some cocaine. And if laws apply to everybody equally, I need you to be locked up. Lock him up. That's the only way I want to do it. And now I want to talk about the crime bill. The, the crime bill, to me, has always been really a tax bill on black America. And I really see Joe as the tax man. Joe the tax man, really, he just buffered an already existing system that has blocked black mothers and fathers from accumulating or retaining businesses, intellectual property, land, and money. And now he's back to collect his due once again, this time in the form of the black vote. And he's masking it in an attempt to erase the legacy of the problem he created. Mm. You stated that yourself. Yeah. Now, the problem that I have is the effect on lifetime earnings of the black men and women who have been unjustly imprisoned, mm -hmm. given longer sentences than whites for the same crimes, or are serving mandatory five to 10 year sentences for nonviolent drug offenses, is impossible to calculate. You can't just erase it with this halfway sort of kind of criminal justice bill. 
And even after release from prison, ex-offenders, the innocent and the guilty, are handicapped by felony convictions, barred from getting college grants and loans, are unable to join the military, they work, they can't work for the government, or get professional licenses most times. And inmates aren't the only ones doing time either. Inmates' family, who are among the poorest Americans, are directly penalized financially and emotionally yeah. by the corrupt penal system that Joe Cole wrote. This, in turn, could basically continues a curse of generational poverty. Mm. We all know that money can be earned by anybody, but real wealth is passed down from one generation to the next. The question that I would ask Joe if I were in a room with him is how can you do that when you've had 20 years of your life stolen? Yeah. I just, I don't understand where he sees this as a reckoning. Well, I don't even think he sees it as a reckoning. I think he had to do it. I think I think his campaign said, listen, this whole thing you're talking about, how you were proud of the crown, you, you didn't see anything wrong with it, and how you how you talked about it wasn't necessarily a problem and you weren't ashamed of it. I think your campaign told you like that's that's a that's a non starter. So I don't even think it's you. Like if, if Joe Biden had wrote a book a while back and said I made a mistake and he did a mere couple, I I still wouldn't vote for him, but I would say I think he feels genuine. But he still he still you still got to, as a politician, you still got to assess him and, and throw him away. But, but, but what happens here is that I don't think Joe Biden came in this like, I'm proud. I'm not ashamed of the crime bill. And what? It was his campaign that made him back off. He didn't do that. 213, 213, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey, Vet. this is Nico out in LA. Hey, Nico, what's um, going on? We, we've heard the term blue dog democrat yes and i think a lot of us make an assumption joe was running with segregationists and so it was presented like that was some sort of a fluke but the problem is he talked like them too so if you compare his language regarding our community versus his language regarding the segregationists he was very mm. loving, much regard mm. for these former Klansmen. Mm -mm. But when it came to our community, he did say the sins of my father and the sins of my grandfather. So you're conceding that a sin was committed. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, I'm not, and he did say, I'm not going to tell the little white boy, little white girl, paraphrasing, that they have to lose rights to make the black community whole. He said that. So then you, the, if you put, if you pair the language with the company he was keeping, that's who he is. Mm. You, the thing is, it was always presented as though, oh, well, he's a Democrat. No, he's just like the blue, blue dog Democrats, only he ran the other way. He was really a Republican who ran as a Democrat because he kept the same company and his language matched his company so then when it came to the bill the bill looked like they wrote it so that was his soul that bill was created from his soul that's you know what joe biden is you know what, so he never had i think he's i think he's worse than the blue dogs because even even the blue dogs like didn't necessarily run to segregationists like he got as anti-black as he could like you understand, like all, like it ain't just one. It ain't just one. Like well, you say, well, maybe they kicked it off. No, you ran to all of them, fam. Like those were your people. You did. You you went to the funeral and spoke and all. I mean, dude. Like, I think he's worse than just like being a conservative dem conservative Democrat. No, he he's basically Republican. He tried to out Republican Republicans. Like, well, you ain't tough enough on crime. Oh, oh for real. Oh, definitely. But 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 I but like I said, I, I'm only just speaking to the fact that it was always presented mm. as though this is some sort of anomaly. You know, oh, he 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 just happens to run with uh, you know ex segregationists mm. and Klansmen. Yeah. Oh, he just happens yeah. to sound like these people. But the reality is that no, when you look at the bill, the bill matched his company. The bill matched his rhetoric. So that has to be who he is. And the fact that he would run in the party that he did, I certainly agree. 
he's worse than the 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 the, the, uh, the blue dogs uh, primarily because the party that he chose to run in supposedly at least right now is the the bearer or or, or the the holder of the supposed blessings of social justice and all that other stuff that goes with that. And so he went in that party as a Trojan horse, basically, because when you look at the outcome, and that goes to the former call, the last caller, mm -hmm. when you tally the cost, real families were destroyed. And like the brother said, families do time with their family member that is actually in mm -hmm. prison. So you can't even calculate because Who's paying for the phone calls? Yeah. The high phone calls. Who's paying for the, 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 the high cost items that, 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 uh, what do they call it? The book and all that kind of stuff. You know, you have to put money on their books. So, yeah, the wife, mother, girlfriend, whoever, yeah. Family member. Yeah. And I'm like, Tone, I live down the street from, uh, Baldwin Hills, Windsor Hills, and all those places. And the truth is, we've seen a lot of boomers that have some wealth. But we've seen a lot of those same people behind sons, granddaughters, grandsons end up in the prison system. Oh, we've seen a lot of those houses. Sometimes maybe uh, the older family member, the dad, mm -hmm. is the one or the mom is the one that's in prison. So grandma dies and the kids are left, are left with the property. Well, guess what? Now they've lost the property. So I'm going to let the line go, but uh, you guys keep 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 at it and 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 at some point our community i want to make one point one at some point our community has to start looking at the other people in the room and say what are they getting and what am i getting because that's the only way that you truly know if you as a voter have something in the common in common with the people that you're voting with mm. and that's what our community has not done we have not looked at the other people and said well okay i'm supposed to be voting as a block but these are the same people that are gentrifying you but you're voting with them mm. then the other group that you're supposedly voting for these people will compete with you for jobs fire you when they become supervisors mm -hmm. and come and take your property so you have to at some point say, okay, I need to look at, am I really voting with these people? Should I really be voting with those people? What are the, what are, what, what are, what are, like I always say, Carl, thank you. I appreciate it. What are the terms of solidarity? You have to define the terms of solidarity. Solidarity is not something that just comes out the wind. You have to define the terms. There have to be terms. They gotta be paperwork. Paperwork. Anyway, fam, I am.